You welcome back to the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Our first major conversation today would be about the petroleum industry bill PIB and the three percent host community fund that is seeming to divide Nigerians along different lines. Um, today we have Mr. Peter Medi, the Commissioner of Energy. Um, good morning, Mr. Medi. Good morning. Thank you for Thank you for joining us. Um, regarding this 3% um, host community fund, um, let's know where you stand regarding this. Would you say that at the end of the day, it's great that this PIB has been passed and that we, you know, we can all just move on with it? Or do you feel that you know, they, need to des they deserve more and that host communities should demand for more? is very, very clear. The fact that uh, whether we should move on or we deserve more or what, the conclusion of this matter is that we are absolutely disappointed as a state and as a people what is being passed today as uh, the petroleum industry bill. Uh, you agree with me that uh, the National Assembly could do for us to make uh, attend the public hearing. Unfortunately, what is being passed today is not a reflection of the effort we made uh, during the public hearing. I actually was part of a team that represented the uh, River State and other host community in the Niger Delta during the uh, presentation. I was there at the House of Reps. I was there at the Senate for the four days this program went on. I was there. Unfortunately, what we are seeing today being passed as uh, the petroleum industry bill does not in any way reflect the yearnings and the aspiration as well as the position of not just river states, but all the nine Niger Delta states. I remember vividly that uh, all the commissioner for energy in all these states, we all came together. We had an interface. And uh, all of us think we have a common position that we presented during the public hearing. Unfortunately, look at what is being passed. First and foremost, let's take it. We asked for 10 percent. Three percent is being passed. What was proposed was 2.5 percent. What exactly does that mean? It means that only what was considered was 0.5 percent. Because they proposed 2.5 and we asked for 10. In fact, the thing we asked for is exactly what. Oh, we really apologize for that, that technical was glitch. Mr. Medi. In earlier bills, earlier versions of this bill. So we think we're not asking for too much. We were I can hear you. Yes, go please go ahead. We, we couldn't hear you earlier. I, I can hear you. I'm saying that uh, what was passed is not a reflection of the effort we made separately at the public hearing to be able to put a better deal for our people, not just in River State and the host community, but the whole of the Niger Delta. For example, we asked for 10 percent, and the 10 percent we asked for was not too much. Because that was what was earlier proposed in earlier versions of this bill. And so, this time around, they came with 2.5%. The 2.5% they came with, we asked for 10, and they ended up passing 3, meaning that it's just 0 0.5 that was being added. Is 0 0.5% what the effort that we all made to be able to, to make submission at the public hearing. So I think the National Assembly is not sensitive to the plight of the Niger Delta people. Because if they were sensitive, at least they should have passed 5%, if not 7%. But they passed 3%. Now the question is 3% of what? 3% of what did they pass? Is it 3% of equity participation? Or 3% of profit? Now look at the level of devastation in the Niger Delta. Look at the environmental challenges we are battling with. 
Look at the issues, the destruction in the area. Look at the kind of thing that has happened to the economy of Niger Delta. We no longer go to farm. We no longer go for fishing. Now, 3% of profit. What does that mean to us? Because it is the companies that are operating that determines what is their cost of production. It is them that will also declare what they it's sad that we have this technical glitch this morning. We apologize for that. But we're really talking about the 3% host communities are fond that, you know, is a matter of controversy. Lots of questions there I have for that commissioner in River State regarding what exactly is the host community. There are also debates about what constitutes a host community. Is it communities where, you know, these, we have this oil? Or is it communities where these oil companies are situated? Is it communities, it, it, you know, we need to find out what exactly, you know, are we talking about. And the 3%, 3% of what? You know, the facts we're seeing here is that 3%, this 3% will come from the expenses of the oil communities, um, oil companies that are operating in the communities. So, um, and also, this 3% we're talking about, what exactly is it going to be deployed into? What would the money be used for? You know, what exactly in the community are we going to, you know, look towards developing? And this 3% exactly, is it going to be enough long term? Because, you know, just like what we've been talking about, when you, st when you strike a conversation and you have negotiations, like this if you think in the long term it will take a lot of conversations to you know change this and adjust this in future are they looking towards making sure that they have a, you know a negotiation towards a figure that is suitable for all parties involved now instead of looking forward to you know renegotiating later um wow. hope we can um reconnect with mr peter medi commissioner for energy in river state yeah. um yes go ahead uh, well you know as we wait to reconnect uh, um you know, I, I would say I understand their concerns. Uh, I can I hope that he can connect with us as quickly as possible, so that I could also ask him, you know, other questions. Um, I understand their concerns. The the environmental uh, damage that has been done to you know places in the Niger Delta for the last sixty years um, will take a lot more than just some of all these bills to um, to repair. to repair to fix. Um, since the current administration came in, we've been talking about the cleanup of the Niger Delta. Uh, we've not gone very far with that. Um, I don't think we've gone up to 30%, you know, um, you know with regards to the success of that. Um, so it will take a lot more. Um, and I hope that they, and of course, representatives of the Niger Delta, the ministers, the commissioners, local government um, chairmen, um, House of Rep members, senators, and the likes, are um, being honest with themselves as to the fact that it's not just about approving 3% or 5% or 10 or 20 or 40%. It's about political will and the implementation and the act, proper, proper use of these funds. Um, I hope that I, I would, because one of the things I'm going to ask him now, one, you know, how sincere are they really with regards to um, these funds and the usage of these funds? Because if they approve 10% for a long time, we've heard about the NDDC, um, billions of, of uh, Naira has been sent through the NDDC for many, many years. We couldn't even successfully probe the NDDC. I think it was late last year when somebody fainted. Um, that probe now seems to have been either swept under the rug or is stalling. Um, but those are sincere questions, you know, and, and if, you know, if, if, if there was some sincerity and some truth and some um, a proper management of funds that were going through the NDDC, then we, there probably wouldn't be a, you know, an argument about 3% or 10% or 5%. I think where this challenge really might be coming from is because of the 30% that is being um, allocated for oil exploration in frontier states. There is that. And so people then will now start to compare why are you giving in frontier states 30 percent and you only going to give, um, you know, um, um, host communities 3 percent. Um, but I don't think it would be I don't think it would be honest or it would be good to have this conversation without reminding the leaders of the Niger Delta and people in those positions that have been there for the last couple of decades. Um, of what their responsibilities are with these funds. While we argue about what the figure should be, 2.5 percent, 3 percent, 40 percent, doesn't matter. But their responsibilities, you know, and the uh, abilities to use these funds uh, properly to um, fix the Niger Delta. If 
there was proper governance, if there was proper utilization of funds in the Niger Delta for the last couple of decades, I don't think this would be such a big problem. Yes, they have the right to demand whatever they choose to demand because it is their communities that these um, companies um, exist. Oil exploration takes um, uh, from their communities. They can be Dubai. They can be even better than Dubai with the amount of money that is made from those communities every mm -hmm. year. But they are a complete opposite of what Dubai looks like. So they have that right. Um, but I don't think they're also asking enough questions at the, um, the government closest to them, government at the local level, the state government, and um, you know, before we get to all, the way, all the way to Abuja. Um, Mr. Uh, Mede, welcome back. Can you hear us clearly? Yes, I can hear you clearly. Okay, that's better now. Well, welcome back. We apologize for the uh, glitches here and there. So, so I, I want you to go you know, uh, now. That I saw an article online that criticized the call for 3% and the complaints by representatives of the Niger Delta. Um, the article, you know, almost described, you know, the representatives of the Niger Delta as being greedy, saying that 3% is enough and also reminding the Niger Delta leadership that there has been the NDDC that has been in existence for many, many years. There's also the 13% derivation fund that has continued to go to these communities and to these states that doesn't seem to have changed much with regards to the living standards of people of the Niger Delta. So I want you to respond to that. Um, why aren't there enough questions as to how much or you know, what the use of these funds, the NDDC and the 13% derivation fund, um, have been used for? Now, before we start talking about 3% to the Niger Delta or to host communities. Well, thank you for that. The question I want to ask back is, who are the people in charge of NDDC? Who are the people in charge of it? When you hear of 13%, do you ask exactly how much that comes to these states? Do you ask? See, these are the realities of it. We don't have to deceive ourselves. What is the condition under the mineral acts that exists in other parts of the country? Why is it that what applies there is not what is applying here? If you are exploring other mineral resources in other parts of the country, what is the relationship that exists? So when you talk about NDDC, take that for example, who determines those on the board of the NDDC? Are they nominated from the Niger Delta states? Are they nominated from the host communities? They are nominated from Abuja, and he who dictates the paper dictates the tone. So where, where, where are we on this? So it is a deliberate plot to underdevelop the place. Who are the people who get the best contracts in NDDC? Who are the people who are abandoning the jobs in NDDC? Today, go and look at the East-West Road. What is happening to it? People in the Niger Delta are suffering. There is no way to their farmland. There is no way to their communities. So, you see, the reality is obvious. We saw this PIB as another way that the reality of the Niger Delta State would have been made better. But unfortunately, okay, why did they give us the 50% of it? Just as it applies to other solid minerals. So when you talk about 30%, 30% of what? 30% of what they declared. When you talk about the NDDC, NDDC of what? Who determines the leadership of NDDC? Who are going the board members? Who are the board members? Do you know how many people from other parts of the country that are on the board of NDDC doing what? How many persons from the South are on the board of the uh, uh, Northeast Commission? And how many non-tenants are on the board of NDDC? You see, there are a lot, lot that are fundamentally wrong with the reality of the situation we faced. So we must be able to understand that 100% of these resources is coming from Niger Delta. So if 100% is coming, and then you are talking about 13%, you are talking about 3%, that's 16%. What about the other 90%? What about the other 80%? Where is it going to? Okay. Who are the people in charge? Who determine this? These are the fundamental issues that need to be raised. So, so it's not Mary, just to criticize. 
Yes, I also need to ask you, what's the plan, you know, for the usage of the, the funds that, you know, plan to come to the, the community, whether 3%, whether 10%, what exactly is the plan for that money? Thank you. This is another point, because if you look at the BID, there is what they call the set law, which is the people that will administer the trust fund. The trust fund that is supposed to receive this money, who appoint the board membership, who are the administrators of the trust fund? These are the realities. Are they from the communities? They are not from the communities. The BIB did not provide that. It is the same oil companies that will appoint those that will be on the management team of the trust fund. It is the same oil company that will administer the trust fund. So you can see where it's playing out is that it's a situation where they're giving you something with right hand and they're using the left hand to take it back. Because there is no independence of the set law, which is the trust fund that is expected to manage this money. These are areas where this BIB is completely not a reflection of the presentation we made. If I want to take you through the presentation we made, there are essential parts of this BIB we ask that should be expunged. There are parts of it we said should be improved upon. The, what is passed now is actually not a reflection of what we spend the effort to make presentation. We spend the effort when they came to all the states to also consult. Every input that was made, none was taken. What was actually proposed was what was passed. So it's a situation of garbage in, garbage out. So what is passed as PIB today is a complete nonsense of the situation and an insult to the people of the Niger Delta, either the states or the host communities. So it is not a reflection of our yearnings. Look at it. We are, we are thinking that the PIB will be an improvement in terms of technology, in terms of management, in terms of being fair to the areas where these resources are being exploited from. Some people who are benefiting from the oil resources have not even gone to the Niger Delta to see the level of devastation, to see what people are suffering. There are sources of livelihood have been taken away. People can no longer go to farm. People can no longer go for fishing. Our fishes are dying. Our crops are dying. Now, and you talk about 30%, you talk about 3%, that's an insult. That's an insult. My dear people, it is important that this country must come to the reality that from whom much is given, much is expected. From whom much is taken, much should be given back. What are you giving us back? Okay, look at this. A situation where they are now asking for 30%, 30% of the same profit to go to an area. And you are saying 3% should go to where the oil is coming from. Then where they are going to look for the oil, 30% should go there. Is that not crazy? I think that the people who either propose this bill or the people who ensure this bill are not sensitive to the plight of the Niger okay, Delta so since, 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 you've raised that, since you've raised that point, Mr. Medi, I need to ask you, do you think the, you know, the House of Assembly members, you know, could have done more. I mean, House of Me Assembly members from the Niger Delta region could have done more to ensure that their people, you know, get more. Well, what I even think is that I was expecting all of them to also stages work out from the discussion and never to come back to that discussion until the right thing is done. I understand the reality of their effort. I understand how helpless they are. I understand the limitation in their numbers. But I think they should have been able to put what we call a minority opposition to the majority position. That is exactly what we have expected. Because look at it. How can you, the people who have majority approve 30% to themselves? And you who have majority, they give you 3%. And you sit there to allow them to have their way. Yes, the minority can have their say, but the, my, my, majority, the majority can have their say, but the minority need to have their way by staging a workout and never to come back to any discussion so long as the BIB is concerned. I think that protest would have been better. But it's not too late. I think Mr. President can right this wrong by not signing this bill, by returning this bill that the property should be done. Because if you want peace, peace must not be an absence of rancor, but it must be a situation where people will be sensitive to the plight of those suffering. 
Look at the people of the Niger Delta and the level of suffering in the Niger Delta. So I think that all this is not the reality of what we expect because right. of the kind of suffering that we are, we, we, we are actually passing through. Another major issue is host community. When you talk about host community, who are the host communities? Look at the bill. They have defined the host communities to involve pipeline communities, meaning that every other communities where pipeline passes from the Niger Delta up to the Kaduna refinery, all those communities now are not defined as host communities mm -hmm. instead of oil bearing communities. So I think it would have been oil bearing communities rather than host communities. Because when you say host communities, it means everywhere pipeline passes in this country, in as much as the pipeline has to do with hydrocarbon as well as oil and gas, then they are all going to benefit from this 3%. So we are completely so changed. And I think it is not a better deal for all us. All right. Peter, um, Mede, thank you so much. Um, we genuinely wish that we had more time to have this discussion. Uh, there's a bit more of these angles that we need to um, explore, but thank you very much. And it's a continuing conversation, I believe. We hope that we can bring you in again with hopefully a member of the uh, House of Representatives uh, to share a little bit more on this. Good morning once again. Thank you. Good morning. I would have loved to even have more time because it would be the issue of the pipeline security where they are yes. saying that... Uh, if there is any problem on the pipeline, the money that they use in repairing and then cleaning the place will be deducted from the three percent. That's another way. Okay, okay, Mr. Medi. Really, this security, this is a conversation. Who is in the charge of the security of the pipeline? Who is All right. the most So this is a complete mess. Thank right. you, um, Mr. Peter Medi, Commissioner for um, Energy and Natural Resources, River State. We hope to continue this conversation um, in due course. We'll take a break here and return to discuss issues of our elections and 2023. Stay with us.